Hi, I'm Dr. Jim Fox. And I'm Dr. Janine Fox. We're Doctors Nutrition, and we get a lot of calls, requests, if you will, uh, to explain thyroid, because we get a lot of people with a lot of thyroid issues, don't know what they what's going on with their thyroid, and they want to understand it a little bit better. So we spend a lot of our time, in the mm-hmm. clinic especially, going over the thyroid problems, uh, explaining how we test for the thyroid and so on. So we thought we'd take just a few minutes and just put it out here to the public so the public kind of understands yeah. exactly what you need to do to really properly detect and if you've got a thyroid problem and how to at least test for it right. or what you should get tested. And for. also, and why it is important to not just do a TSH because out exactly. there every day we have people come in and say, well, they've checked my thyroid and they have every symptom. And the people will say, well, my doctor said they checked my thyroid. Well, we always ask for a copy. Bring me what they did. We look at the copy and it's almost always... 90% of the time, a TSH only. Mm-hmm. And a TSH only is not the way to check your thyroid. For one, it is checking the brain's message to the thyroid. It is a thyroid stimulating hormone. So your thyroid stimulating hormone is a message that comes from the brain to tell your thyroid to work or to slow down and not work. So it goes up and down accordingly to what it wants your thyroid to do. The problem is it isn't always foolproof. Um, a lot of times the brain is not giving you the right message. So if you don't check the actual thyroid hormones and other things in the thyroid, then you're not going to know that there is an issue. Now, when you mentioned those thyroid hormones, I mean, mm-hmm. we talked about the T- or talked about the yep. TSH. Uh, that's the signal from the brain to the thyroid telling it kind of what to do. To see what the thyroid itself is actually mm-hmm. doing, you need to check something called a T4 and then eventually a T3. And the reason being is T4 is your primary hormone that's made by the thyroid. And it's called thyroxin. Thyroxin's put out in the bloodstream, goes around to the body wherever it's needed. Then it has to be converted into T3 and actually to free T3. There's several steps involved. But the free T3 is the final hormone that actually sets your metabolic rate for you. Yeah. Uh, That's the key. And if you don't check Mm -hmm. the TSH and the T4 and the T3, you really don't know exactly what's going on with your thyroid. And there's a lot of problems can ha- can crop up with the thyroid. A right. lot of problems. And there's also another problem with thyroid testing as a whole is there it, it's a pretty wide range. And we use more optimal ranges on what is optimal for thyroid because you really want your thyroid to be optimal. You don't want it to be barely okay. Because barely okay, I've seen a lot of symptoms. So you can get a lot of thyroid symptoms if it's in range, but it's not quite where it should be. Exactly. So we do look a lot at optimal ranges. Now, we're going to go through, we have something called our expanded thyroid panel. And it checks a lot. Now, all of our panels contain four tests on thyroid. But we actually have it to where you can do even more. And that is even more optimal, but we keep the other one to keep it the prices down so that more people can actually check those levels. So when you, we're going to talk about all the all the testing in that panel and what it is, what the optimal levels are, and that way you know when you look at your your thyroid testing, you can see what does it look like? You know, where is it? So on the TSH, that is the one, because we do do a TSH. That's not the only thing we do, but you do check it. That's your starting point. Right. And labs differ in ranges. The lab range can be anywhere from 0.35 to 5.5. Some are lower than that, like up to 4.5. Optimal ranges definitely either below two or three. Um, three for sure. Yeah, three yeah, for sure. For sure. And it really depends on the other levels because if your other levels are really good and the TSH is not, you got to take it all into account, not just one level. So that's kind of where we come in to help people look at it. And we've done it for a long time. We've actually been doing this for. 25, yeah, 28 years. Yeah. So it's, we've done it for a long time and we see a lot of thyroid because that's one of the things that people are very unhappy with their results of their treatment. Yeah, well, they've probably mm-hmm. been on, online, maybe Googled it, yep. see what are the typical thyroid uh, symptoms and for a hyperthyroid, for instance. And, and there's quite a list. There really is. Right. So you can Google it yourself and look and you maybe have. And you see, well, gee, I've got like seven out of those ten. You know, uh, there's a strong possibility you got a thyroid problem, and it may not be optimal. That's nope. for sure. It may be in range. You may, your TSH right. may be within that range, but it may be toward the high end of the range, and you're still not getting enough of the T3 or whatever. So you got to look at yep. that 
all of those numbers together at one time. That's right. the key. So you've right. got the TSH. Then you got to look at thyroxin, which is right. T4. And on the expanded thyroid panel, we do both a total T4 and we do a free T4 because that'll tell us, okay, what are you producing? And then how much of it is available to be used? Because there's different problems that can actually block the utilization. Um, estrogen, for instance, somebody with an overestrogen problem, they might have Plenty of total T4, but they don't have enough free T4 because the T3 uptake is low. Right. So it's one reason we look at a lot of different numbers. Um, then you actually have your T3. And then you have your total T3. Let's turn into T3. And then the free T3, which is what's usable. Now, again, why would you have your T3 high and your free T3 low? It's probably because it's going into reverse T3. And we check that on that panel. Exactly. Too, that panel yeah. has that as well. Um, when you start looking at reverse T3, okay, what can do that? Most of the time, a lot of times stress and the stress hormone. Cortisol. Stress hormone will change the thyroid. Uh, adrenals and thyroid go hand in hand. They're part of the endocrine system. And so you really want to kind of see what they're doing together. Um, on our expanded thyroid panel, the cortisol is part of the test because we want to see what is your spot cortisol that day. There's no doubt we can do more extensive you know, adrenal testing, but on this, we want to at least see an idea of where the cortisol is. Because if you don't know that, then you don't know what's causing some of the other problems. Right. And if that way you get to yep. look at your at that uh, reverse T3, and just think about a reverse T3, what we call medically, it's called sequestered. What does that mean? It's hidden. Your body can't see it, can't use it. So therefore, mm -hmm. you might have plenty, but you can't use it. Well, it still doesn't do you any good, does it? Uh, so right. that's why we check those things. And then you get into some of the autoimmune problems. Right. Then you that, look at the thyroid antibodies. Yes. Yeah. So the thyroid antibodies are also tested because you want to see, is your body making antibodies to your thyroid? And the body can actually make antibodies to attack the thyroid. Now, they know one of the most common reasons for this, not the only reason, most common reason, is the Epstein-Barr virus. Very so common, yeah. when Epstein-Barr is hidden in your thyroid and your body makes antibodies to it trying to attack it, a lot of time it attacks itself. And you'll see some people where they just never can regulate that medication up and down, up and down, up and down, because it, there's some days they're probably attacking the thyroid more than others. So knowing that you have Hashimoto's, knowing that that is part of the issue, there are other things you can do. So that's kind of why we like to see if you have that as well. Because yeah. um, uh, we see a lot of people, mm -hmm. a lot, that come in, uh, and, and they'll raise their history. And their TSH has been high. The next three months later, they check it, it's low. Three months later, it's high, it's low, it's high, it's low. And that's a pretty good indicator that yep. you've got something like Hashimoto. Especially when you haven't changed your dosage of medication. Right. It, it, well, or if you're not even on medication, which is, may, which is some people. Even, right. And or if they are on medication, a lot of times they're, they're constantly adjusting it right. up and down, up and down, up and down, and they never get it right because the body's kind of outpacing you on that one. Right. Uh, so that's, that's one of the big issues. We see that one so often that it's really not even funny. Right. So uh, that's why you common. need more testing than just yeah. a TSH. Um, just a little example, for instance. So we had a perfect example of why you should never just check a TSH. Had a young girl come in from out of town. She had been to multiple doctors within the last four years. She was in her early 20s. She had gotten to where she couldn't think. She couldn't function. She was actually had to drop out of college. She couldn't do anything anymore. She was totally non-functional. They had checked her thyroid is what they told her. It was normal. TSH was like one point something. So she was good. Well, when she came to us, when she was, we said, you know, we do a full panel. So we checked it. Her TSH was one point, one point something. I mean, it was, I was just totally perfect. When you looked at her TSH, totally perfect. Her actual thyroid hormones, when we checked them, were alert. No, they were critical values, right. I should say. Because when we get lab results back, you know, you have high or low. Then you have alert, which means you need to pay attention. And then you have critical, which means this can actually kill you. She had zero, like no thyroid hormone whatsoever in her body. And that was causing all of her problems. And this poor girl had been on every m mental medication that you could imagine because she couldn't function. She couldn't do anything. So they kept thinking it was psychiatric. So they said, oh, five different people had told them, oh, we, we looked at your thyroid. Well, they didn't. They looked at her TSH.
Close so, to the brain. perfect example of how a TSH can be perfectly normal. And on this girl, I suggested her go to a um, endocrinologist and have MRIs, make sure the brain doesn't have a tumor on it, make sure there was not something that was making her not make the TSH properly. And that was not the case. In her case, it just didn't work right. So she had an underactive thyroid, and the brain's message just did not function properly. So you can have more than one problem. And that was, I always said when that happened, I was like, oh, this is the absolute perfect example. And it was an extreme example of why you should never just check a TSH. And unfortunately, that's what we see in the majority of the people out there that's having told they had their thyroid checked. It mm -hmm. really has not been checked. Now, we have a lot of people that come in that say, oh, I'm having all these symptoms. It's got to be my thyroid. And we do the big thyroid panel and it is perfect. It is not your thyroid. It's got to be something else. So there's other things that can mimic thyroid, yes, no yeah. doubt. So I did want to say, you know, it's not always a thyroid problem. But the only way you know is to check enough numbers so you can see, is it really your thyroid or is it something else mimicking thyroid problems, which the, anything in the endocrine system can. Yes, they can. So the endocrine system does work together. So we like to treat the person as a whole instead of parts because you're not just a thyroid. You actually have other things that affect that thyroid. And actually, the uh, another part of the endocrine system is hormones, you know, your, your sex hormones. Um, and especially in females, the estrogen can play a big role in how the thyroid's doing. Probably a lot more so than in the male. It, it is. Uh, the guys, now, if a guy uh, has low testosterone, yeah. then yes, it can start affecting the thyroid. But women, a lot of times, it's too much estrogen. Right. But then we see men with too much estrogen. So yes. I had one just yesterday. I mean, I have a man, and he, just yesterday, his estrogen level was 750. Ooh. And he's not taking estrogen, actually. Um, so, you know, the thing is, that can block the thyroid as well. So men can have an issue. We're not going to block out men completely. But we do see women, the hormones affect the thyroid more. Yes. And so you got to look at the body as a whole. And we do panels that actually include all, you know, everything plus the expanded thyroid panel. We can do it any way you want. Yeah. So you can check different parts, but you do need to make sure you're getting enough checked when you get your thyroid checked. And another thing that you can check on thyroid, it is not on our panel. We added a lot to our panel. We don't put it on the, the panel because it itself is a little bit more of an expensive test. And we don't want the panel to be so high. Nobody can do it. We actually is iodine. Iodine is a true deficiency in everywhere. And I know that, you know, years and years ago, they iodized salt so that people would stop having goiters. And so there's no doubt iodine deficiency plays a huge role as well. And you actually have to have iodine to make tyrosine. Um, so oh, to make the, uh, the, the thyroxine, T4. I'm sorry. Thyroxine, T4. Yeah. The, yeah. Tyrosine is an amino acid. That's I, I was going to say, yeah. you have to have tyrosine and iodine right. to make thyroxine. Yeah. So it can be a deficiency as well. So the iodine is something else you can add. And we are on the coast. So we are on you know, the water where people eat seafood, which tends to be a place where you get iodine. We see deficiency in almost everybody we check. Not only that, mm -hmm. a lot of people might have adequate iodine. And that's when you have to look at things like that reverse T3 and so on. Because mm -hmm. they may have adequate iodine, but yet their T4 is a little bit low. And one of the problems you can get into with that is what, iodine is in the family, chemically, of what we call halides. And there's others, for instance, bromine or bromide. Mm -hmm. And well, people say, well, I don't, I don't eat bromide. I don't eat bromine. Well, yeah, you might. <laughs> do you eat bread that's commercially mm -hmm. produced? you're getting some bromide, okay? Because they use bromide as a preservative to make it last a long time on the shelf. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it's gone pretty quick. So if if you're eating commercially, you know, what we call ultra-processed foods, then you're probably going to get that bromide. And in some susceptible individuals, it's going to displace that iodine. Even if you've got iodine, it's going to displace it, and you've got a thyroid problem. Yeah. So there's a lot that goes into it, not just one thing. Right. And there are things that you can do for it. Um, another important nutrient is selenium. Selenium yes. does help the conversion of T4 to T3. So you, you, there's there's nutrients that are essential for the thyroid to function properly. You know, if you really want to get into it, we have something called a nutri eval where you look at every nutrient um, there is and right. every amino acid separately and everything there is to see what the optimal levels are. But you don't have to go that far. Most people, we can actually, you know, get them help 
with just yeah. doing the expanded thyroid panel that we mentioned because um, yeah. it really does give you a lot of information. And we talked about optimal levels earlier and we talked about a TSH, but like on a T4, on a total T4, optimally, we want it between like six and probably 10. Yeah. Um, that's probably a good optimal level. We'll see a lot of people where they're below that and some people go above that and especially people on levothyroxine. The people on levothyroxine, one of the common things that you see is their total T4 is really high. And they have, the, they have kept increasing it because their TSH wasn't quite right. Well, they're not turning that levothyroxine into T3 properly because a lot of times with synthetics, it just doesn't do it properly. Some people can do yeah. it very readily, some can't. Some don't. Mm -hmm. And so if you're not turning it into T3, then you keep looking like you need more and more thyroids. So they keep up and up and up in the levothyroxine. And then in turn, you get somebody very anxious, but yet very tired, weight gain, dry skin, constipation, you know, the whole thing. And they just keep saying, I'm, they're telling me my thyroid's okay, but it's not. And that's what we hear every day. I and like. on those people, a lot of times what we do find is a low free T3. So low free, free T3. Optimal range on that is about three to four. Yeah. So you want to kind of see where you are there. Like I said, you got to take the whole picture into account um, before you just start you know, taking stuff and, but thyroid's one that you can take too much too. We see a lot of people that are self taking, <laughs> self medicating <laughs> themselves on thyroid and they have it so overactive that it's not good either. Because yeah. an overactive thyroid is very harmful. Very. Um, it is. It actually affects the heart. It yes. makes your irregular heartbeat. It can make high blood pressure. It makes you not sleep. So there's so many things an overactive thyroid does as well. So it's not just, okay, let's just take all this thyroid hormone and make it better. That's not always the case either. So thyroid needs to be optimal for your body to work optimally because right. every cell in your body actually needs thyroid. And on extreme cases on low thyroid, and we've had quite a few over the years, the organs will start shutting down if we, when we have some of the critical levels yeah. as well. So you'll actually, the body can't work without thyroid hormone. So it yeah. is very, very important. It is one of those organs that is very important. Right. Or glands, I should say. System. Um, system, <laughs> right. So it is important to get all the information you need in order to assess it properly. Yeah. It is. You know, and it's just one of the pieces, one of the many pieces, actually, of good health. And it has to be done right. And, and we see it uh, all too often, like you yep. said, daily. We get people coming in that said, well, yeah, they checked my thyroid, it's okay. And yet they've only checked a TSH. So they didn't do a very good job of it. Didn't do a thorough job, let's put it that way. Yeah. So they didn't do a very thorough job of it. And we check it and sure enough, there's something causing it. Might be that low T3 uptake, okay, back to the hormone mm -hmm. thing. Okay, now we know, okay, you got some hormone issues going on. So we, it to, gives us an idea of where to, else to look in the body as well. So it's about putting all of the pieces and parts right. together to put Humpty Dumpty back together again. Right. And we have multiple different things we use depending on right. what the problem is. We right. do have some of the glandulars right. and we do use, we have a couple different ones depending on what's going on with the thyroid. We have DIM, diendole methane, which actually helps with, if it is an estrogen blocking, it actually definitely helps with that. You can use selenium. We have our thyro build which has just all the nutrients you need to make your own thyroid. Including and, selenium and yeah, iodine. It has the selenium yeah. and iodine and tyrosine. And, yeah. So it's one that is not going to hurt you, but it will, can hurt you to take the glandulars without needing them. Yeah, so we, we don't never recommend with, yeah. anybody take anything like a glandular without checking your levels on the thyroid. Exactly. And that's one of the problems we've seen. People have bought stuff, maybe online, and they just start that's taking likely. it. And then when we do their lab work, it is not good. So you can cause problems also if you don't know where you're going. That's what lab work tells you is what do you need to do? And then you repeat it. When we do something for the thyroid, we recheck it a lot of times in a month. And you don't necessarily have to do the whole thing. You check the parts that were not correct. So you actually look at, the, look at it again, see what, what you have. And then we also, for autoimmune thyroid, you got to work on that virus. Um, Olivier is one of our go-tos for the Epstein-Barr virus. Right, that's that olive and, extract yeah. that we've used. And, and, and it is. It's, it's a go-to for it a is. lot of things. It, it is. It really is, especially and if it's viral. But if definitely, it's viral. if it's EBV, been very good at helping with that. So you have to kind of normalize your, 
your immune response to the thyroid or else it is going to go up and down. Right. And then you have to normalize it with the immune system normalized. So there are things you can do for that as well. So it's not that you're checking it and there's nothing you can do about it. There are things you can do to actually help optimize your thyroid and get your health better by making it better. Another little tidbit before we go that a lot of people don't realize, and I don't know, and they really aren't told this, is somebody that is cholesterol. Cholesterol is tied hand to hand with thyroid. And that for some reason, people don't, don't, well, don't know that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yes. And what you'll see is somebody that's always had you know good cholesterol, all of a sudden it goes way up. You got to look at the thyroid. You got to look deep into the thyroid if that happens. Especially if they don't respond to, and because typically they're going to, first thing they're going to do medically yep. is give you a statin drug. And if you, and you see a lot of these patients, if they put them on a statin, doesn't respond. So they increase it. Still doesn't respond like they want it to. And next thing you know, this person's taking a gigantic dose yep. of statins. Their, thy, their, uh, their cholesterol is not responding like they should. And, and we look at it and sure enough, most of those people yep. have some sort of thyroid problem. So thyroid can play a huge role in lipids as well. It can. It, sure it plays can. a big role in everything. everything. So that's one reason we wanted to do a show on it. Yeah. So people know that there's more that you can check and there's more that you can do. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So if you got something out of this little uh, short video, uh, hit that subscribe button, the bell notification, because the next time we'll be throwing up a lot of other videos in the near future. And if there's something you would really like to, in those comments down there, type in what you'd like to hear about next. Uh, in the meantime, let us know if you need any help with your thyroid. I'm Dr. Fox, and I want to thank you for watching this YouTube video. Be sure and hit that subscribe button, hit that little bell, so you'll be notified on any upcoming videos that we have coming up. And thank you again for watching our YouTube videos.